Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. This is a clip from one of my weekly group tutoring sessions at the University of Delaware for Physics 201. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, no more questions. We're going to move on to the last topic of tonight, which is momentum and impulse now. Impulse. I'm going to do the baseball bat example because it's one of my favorites. And, well, actually, I, I don't like it because I, can, I literally, I can't draw baseball bats. Like, just look at this. Let me try. So, here's my baseball bat. That, that wasn't terrible. I'll draw, like, the tape lines here. One of my better baseball bats, to be perfectly honest. And let's say we have an 80-mile-an-hour fastball coming into the bat. Or, you know what? 80 miles per hour is what? 40 meters per second, roughly? 40 meters per second is coming towards the bat. The batter hits it, and the ball comes back with a velocity, let's say, of 100 meters per second, which is roughly 200 miles per hour. Um, I don't know if this is accurate or not. I'm not a baseball guy, but I do know that when you hit a ball, it's going to go back faster the way than it, it came initially. So this is our problem here. How do I know this is an impulse problem? Well, first, let me ask the question. So I, I'm going to ask two questions. Part one, what is the impulse? That's the first part. Part A, what is the impulse? Part A, what is the impulse? This is a dead giveaway. This is an impulse problem. How else do I know this is an impulse problem? Whoops, I forgot to give the mass of the baseball. Mass equals, let's say, 0.2 kilograms. And again, that's for the baseball. How do I know this is an impulse problem besides the fact that I told you? Any ideas? Are we just focusing on one object? We're only focusing on one object. That's exactly right. It's the ball. Did I, I? Even though we have a bat, I didn't tell you the mass of the bat. I didn't tell you about its velocity. I don't care. So it's just the ball, and for that reason, it's impulse. So how do we solve impulse problems? Well, remember, there's two equations. You have J, which again is the stupid variable we use for impulse for no reason, is equal to force times time which is also equal to delta P, but then I'm going to cross out delta P because I like rating P final minus P initial. Now, if I think about which equation I'm going to use for impulse, for those of you who say force times time, question, what's the force and what's the time? Because I gave you neither. So good luck finding it that way. That's not possible. We're going to be using P final minus P initial. Why? Because remember, P, momentum, what's that equation? MV. Remember that list of equations I'd recommend you memorize? This is absolutely one of them. This is absolutely one of them. So, final momentum. Now we need to figure out which one's final and which one's initial. So, initial I is the top, F final is the bottom. That makes sense, because the ball comes in at 40, leaves at 100. Great. So, that means J, my impulse, is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial now let's plug in these variables. Mass, I said, was 0.2. Velocity final, we see here, is 100 minus mass, 0.2, times V initial, I said, was 40. Okay, I can plug this in my calculator. I get 0.2 times 100 minus 0.2 times 40. I get a final answer of 12, and now I need... oh. The units for impulse are the kilogram meter per second, which are the same units for momentum. And uh, you're going to hate me now. But can someone tell me why this answer is wrong? Anyone? You get a gold star if you get it right. I don't have... It would be a, it'd be a fake gold star, but it's symbolic. Well, I thought that... Um, isn't impulse in watts, or is that different? Watts is power. Okay. Do you know what power... Do you think power will be on this exam? Does anyone know? We haven't talked about that today. It probably will. I'm not sure. I'm just going to tell you the equation so you have it. Power is equal to work over time. And remember, work equals force times distance cosine theta. So it's not too bad. Power is actually one of the easier equations. And the units are watts. Units are watts for power. Capital W. Which is the same variable we use for work. Yes, it's very confusing. Okay, any questions on power? Okay, back to this question for momentum. 
Uh, why is 12 kilogram meter per second wrong? I'm going to scroll up back to my work. Why is that wrong? And why will all of you fail the test tomorrow? Hopefully not. Remember what I said about momentum, the direction matters. One of these velocities is going to be negative. Which one? Which one? Oh, is it going to be the um, the ball going towards the bat? So yeah, that's exactly right. Because I'm saying right is positive, left is negative. So that 40 is actually going to be negative 40. And we get actually a completely different answer. Let's see what we get. 0.2 times 100. Now plus 0.2 times 40. You get 28. 28 is the correct answer. Remember when I said be very, 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 very careful with positives and negatives for momentum? This is why. This is exactly why. And that's the answer to this question. I have one more. I said this was part A. There is going to be a part B. But any questions on part A? Okay, so the last question, part B. Let me just wall off. This was power again. So I, I'm going to say the force of the bat on the ball was 2,000 newtons. How long was the bat in contact with the ball? I'll give you a second for you all to write that down. The force of the bat on the ball was 2,000 newtons. How long was the bat in contact with the ball? So obvious, obviously here I give you a force. I'm asking for a time. This is going to be that other equation for impulse. J equals force times time. And we found J. J was impulse in part A. We said the impulse was 28. So we're saying 28 equals force times time. I give you force. I said it was 2,000. So 28 equals 2,000, whoops, one too many zeros, times t. So, so if I divide by 2,000, I'm going to get my time that it was in contact for. 28 divided by 2,000 will get a final answer of 0 0.014 seconds, which is 14 milliseconds for those of you who are curious. Very short amount of time, but it makes sense because that's probably what it would be like in real life. Okay, and that's pretty much going to do it for, I mean, all the notes I have on this test. So don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want me to start doing free weekly group sessions at your university, please post in the comments below or email me at dan at danthetutor.com. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.